Hello, in this short video, we're going to look at the welfare effects of a subsidy, a government subsidy, and this will be strictly a graphical analysis. So over here on the left, we have a supply and demand diagram. Without government subsidy, we have a demand curve, looks like this, and the supply curve that is given by S. So without a subsidy where demand intersects supply, the equilibrium price is $5 and the equilibrium quantity is 5 units. If we're now to look at a subsidy, and in this example we'll assume that the government gives producers $2 for every unit they produce, the first thing is well, what's going to happen to the supply curve? The supply curve will shift down by the amount of the subsidy. So in essence, it's reducing the marginal cost of production for firms uh, by $2. Because every time they produce a unit, they're going to get $2 from the government. So to analyze the subsidy, we're going to shift down the supply curve by the amount of the subsidy. So this is just a $2 shift. And you can see here that's uh, 6 uh, to 4. Our new equilibrium occurs right here, where the supply curve that incorporates subsidies intersects our original demand. We got a price of $4 and an equilibrium quantity of 6 So with the subsidy, consumers are now paying less for the product, and they're buying more, so they're going to benefit. Sellers are receiving actually $6, and this is a little bit confusing. Sellers are receiving $4 from consumers, but then the government gives them $2 for each unit sold. So on net, sellers now are clearing $6 from each unit sold, and they're also selling more units. So sellers are going to be better off. So what I'll do now is I'll look at the, the welfare implications. Uh, consumer surplus, CS, producer surplus, PS, government expenditures with and without subsidies, and then total economic surplus. So with no subsidy, the relevant uh, price is going to be $5, and the relevant quantity is going to be 5 units. So to find consumer surplus, we are looking at the area of this triangle from the demand curve to the price, which happens to be $5 all the way up to the last unit sold. So this area here, and the area of a triangle is one-half base times height, is given by these dimensions. So one-half base, 10 minus 5, um, the height, uh, 5 minus 0, and you get consumer surplus of $12.50. To find producer surplus, again, without a subsidy, the relevant price and quantity are Price is $5, quantity is 5 units. So we're looking at this triangle here uh, between a price of $5 and the supply curve without the subsidy. So one half this area right here. We also get a value of $12.50. The government is not subsidizing production here, so government expenses are uh, equal zero. Total surplus, $12.50 plus $12.50 is $25. Okay, so now we go to the subsidy case. With the subsidy, consumers are now paying $4 and buying six units. So we're looking at the area between the demand curve and the price that consumers pay up to six units of output. So we got this big triangle right here. Uh, so one half 10 minus four. Multiplied by 6 minus 0, consumer surplus with the subsidy is $18. What about producer surplus? Producers with the subsidy are now clearing $6. They're getting $4 from the consumer, $2 from the government, and producers are selling 6 units. So we're looking at a triangle given by this area right here. So difference between the, the market price or the price that sellers are getting, $6 in the supply curve. So one half six times six, we get $18. Government expenses. So the government is subsidizing the firms for each unit they produce. Six units are produced and the government subsidy is $2. So basically it's this area right here. It's a rectangle. 
a two by six rectangle. So government expenses are $12. Six units are being produced, subsidy is $2 a unit. So this is costing the government $12. If we were to add up the uh, total surplus now in the market, it now is $24. And over here in this last column, I'm just showing the change. So consumers benefit by the subsidy, producers benefit by the subsidy, but the loss to the government exceeds the benefits to consumers and producers. So overall, there is a dead weight loss in this market. Okay, we can see the dead weight loss is the, the shrinkage in total surplus going from $25 to $24 or $1. Or we could simply add up this column here. $550 plus $550 is $11 minus 12, we get the $1 loss. We can also identify this area of the deadweight loss as being this triangle area right here. Uh, we can intuitively think about this loss as follows. The cost of producing these items to society given by the supply curve exceeds the benefit that consumers get from consuming them. So the marginal cost represented by the supply curve exceeds the marginal benefit uh, given by the demand curve or the height of the demand curve here. So we're producing units uh, that uh, have a, a net cost to society. The cost of producing these outweighs the value that consumers place on these. If you wanted to calculate the area of this triangle, one half base times height, so height of six minus four, base of six minus five, you get the deadweight loss of $1. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.